Welcome to the Tradie Wife Life podcast, brought to you by Tradies in Business, where we talk to tradie wives about their goals, their challenges, their hopes and dreams, and how their trade business can help with that. Welcome back to the Tradie Wife Life podcast. I'm very excited to be joined today by another one of our stellar tradie wives who have been with us for quite some time. Renata, you you are one of the longer term clients that we've been working with just over three years now already. I can't believe it's been that quick. In fact, you've seen nearly all incarnations of our business as our business journey has changed over the years as well and been a part of that uh, all the way through from the very, uh, I guess, entry level. We used to have a product called the Trade Desk. It was like a membership level, a subscription where you came and you you had the body of information every month and you stepped up into the drawing board, uh, which was like yeah. just group coaching with, with your own specific group that you attended a couple of times a month. And now you're one of our tradiepreneurs and you've even had a journey through that program um, all the way up now to our highest level as a master's client, which sounds really wanky, doesn't it? A master's client, but we do have a lot of fun. Renata, thank you so much for joining me here today. It's a pleasure to have you on Tradie Wife Flight. You are very welcome and I'm so happy to be here. Um, masters, it always sounds like I need a jacket, like we're a golfing or something like that. Um, but yeah, but it has been you know, take a shot every time you say the word journey. It has been quite a journey um, and one that I'm very thankful for. So, yeah. We're very thankful to have not just you, but also your darling husband as part of our journey. You've both been big supporters of ours. Renata, uh, look, we start off the show really similarly every time, particularly when we're talking to a real tradie wife. How did you fall into this role of being a tradie wife? Well. it's exactly that, falling into it. Um, we've had our landscaping business for 17 years and it's the same age as the duration that Luke and I have actually been together as a couple. So we never forget our anniversary. <laughs> um, literally, I, I met him um, at a club one night and he asked me to come and watch him play soccer, um, which I thought, no way, I'm an NRL girl, don't do soccer. Um and that was also the first day, the night that we met him, uh, that I met him, that he got his first contract for a solo landscaping gig. Wow. Um, the next week we were dating. Um, and then even one day after work, I stopped in to see him at his job site. And we'd been dating for two weeks and a shovel was in my hand and I was helping him move soil. So um, it was definitely from the very start. Yeah. I did have my own career in wholesale where I worked in team leadership and was there for 10 years, um, which is where I've been able to, I guess, um, attribute my leadership knowledge from, from that role. And I always just helped Luke in the business. I just helped. I just um, did some reconciling in zero, uh, helped you with a few flyers, eventually helped create uh, a website or two. And we started a family and my job was in the city. So we're based on the central coast. So it was a four hour commute each way. We knew when we'd started a family, it wouldn't be feasible for me to continue doing that. And I didn't want to. Um, I loved my career, but I was very happy to start a family. Um, When our son was about six months old, I just started working casually at a cafe with um, a friend's business. And after a few shifts, I thought, what am I doing why aren't I working on our business? And that's when I started talking to Luke um, a little bit more and like, how more, how else can I help? Mm. Um, And you'll notice I keep saying the word just and help because it took a long time to get out of that mind frame that I wasn't just helping, I was working. Mm. And that's a whole nother ball game of how we have to as tradie wives get over that mentality um so anyway back to the story um I started working full-time for the business with the baby at home he was going to daycare some days and then I was able to dedicate time um it was only through working with tradies in business from just before COVID hit so February 2020 that I found you guys and within 15 minutes of talking to you, it wasn't even a 15 minute call. I think it went for about 90 minutes and I'm like, I'm in and Luke's like, I'm in too. Um, 
it wasn't till working with you that we were able to actually put parameters in about what my role was going to be, a job description, a title, which was so evolving. I was, I'm just helping my husband's business to, I'm just an administration officer to an administration manager to a business manager to five and a half years later, since I've been working full time in the business, If I was to introduce myself, I am the general manager of a landscape construction company on the Central Coast. We've been in operation for 17 years and specialise in landscape design, construction and maintenance. There's no just and there's no help. So that's how I landed my gig as a tradie wife. It's incredible to see how the process does evolve. So I, I, I feel like every single tradie wife we speak to in the early days is just helping or they are, even if they've moved past the just helping, they still haven't really stepped into the ownership of their own roles. And I can recall those really early conversations. There was a few of us ladies talking in your very early days, because we've got a couple of you that are still very much part of our community and how the, the, the title, I guess the job description, the title really allowed you to take that opportunity to step into that role rather than you know, I know I certainly felt like I was always hiding behind my husband to some extent, and that's not my personality at all. So it was the very first step to me really taking control of the role I was able to have and also creating a new career for myself. So as you referenced, I think all of us are giving up other careers to be part of this, um, the our trade businesses, and we need to have some ownership over the new career we're creating for ourselves because it's a fantastic career opportunity that I think too often we look at and think, oh, I'll just help out for a little bit instead of understanding, no, we've got an awesome opportunity here to create the life that we want with all of the trimmings. So we're not having to do the corporate thing and miss out on time with our kids, or we're not having to travel all that way to go to work and miss out on time for the family, or we're unable to, you know, there's a real glass ceiling for many of us when we're working externally that we can absolutely smash when we are in control of our own businesses. There's so much more opportunity And a lot of that starts with giving you your role a title so that you're able to really step into the ownership of that instead of just helping or just being the wife is another thing I hear all the time. Um, And it's so unfounded and unfair. So great point that you have raised. Thank you. Uh, We, some of, one of the things that you referenced uh, earlier was about the transference of your skills from your previous career, Renata, into what you're doing now. And it is something that you and Luke do exceptionally well, and that's the management of your team and the leadership of your team. I'd love to have you explain to our listeners how those skills are able to transfer. Because I think, again, when we first feel like, oh, I'll just step in and help, we might do some things that are uncomfortable. Like, you know, I never did the financial piece a whole lot in my previous career, and not the way I do it now. Um, and I, you know, I was a bit uncomfortable. I didn't think really that all of my other skills would necessarily transfer, and yet they all do quite directly. I'd love you to share some, perhaps some examples or just your experience around the transference of the knowledge that you've gained before. Yeah. So to me, it doesn't, didn't matter that I wasn't a tradie. I didn't, didn't matter that I hadn't done my apprenticeship or, um, had never worked for a construction company before. I had worked for a company where I had to be in charge of a large number of people and a large number of clients and had a lot of responsibility there. So with whatever your role is, there's always going to be things that you can take from that when you do transfer to being a tradie wife and working within the business. Um, That could be organizational skills. That could be if you have an accounting background, fantastic. That's going to help a lot. Um, Marketing, you know, if you're coming across from a marketing role, excuse me, then you can't, you may not have that leadership skill, but you have that marketing knowledge. Okay. Well, look where you can actually gain more leadership skills. So my strength is in leadership. My weaknesses are finances. Oh, stay away. Cash flow (laughs) forecast, budget and actuals, you know, go away. Um, Love money. Love spending it. Um, Love spending it in the business. I will say that Luke does not like spending, um, funds. I love buying excavators. I love buying new tools. I think it's important. I think it excites the team as well. Um, But that's another topic. It took me until earlier this year when I had an aha moment. Um, We've been working with you for three years. 
bad, bad student here. My cash flow abilities to put it in paper, put it on Excel. I just hear to my, like, oh, the dog ate my homework. You know, I'm not, I didn't do it. And it was kind of like this aha moment when somebody else in our Chinese in business community said, why do you have to do it? And I'm like, well, because I need Luke inside and he needs to go through all the modules and everything and we need to work out how to do it. She's like, no, get your bookkeeper to do it. And I had to admit to myself, I really, and this has been vulnerable, I didn't know exactly what a bookkeeper did. Mm-hmm. And that felt like one of those shameful things when you have your own business and you don't necessarily want to pop your hand up and go, I don't understand margins and markups and we do but you know being vulnerable enough to put yourself out there to realize oh I don't have to do it now that might come from sounding like a privileged position of having to pay and outsource someone else to do it and that can be a very very scary thing but it has absolutely turned our business around I thought bookkeeping was just reconciling in zero I had no idea So since we've done that, it has freed up more of my time to actually focus on the bigger ticket items that I am great at doing. And it is also leading us on a path of knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think there's a really excellent um, clip from Richard Branson that I saw just recently where he even admitted, I've got no idea on gross and profit and all that stuff, but I don't need to know. I can outsource that. Um, It's the same as, you know, your terms and conditions and contracts, you're going to have to spend some money to get the professionals to do it. And that can be very scary and an expensive outlay at the start, but the protection you will have within your business is priceless. Mm. It can absolutely protect you from thousands and thousands of dollars of potential losses. So, you know, that transition when we spoke about taking what my skill set was and applying it to the business. The strengths where we do really excel is in our um, team culture and team management. It's incredibly important to us to foster a workplace where our team feels safe, secure and happy. And I think it's also about breaking down stereotypes and barriers for our male dominated industry. Mm. Um. So, yeah, that's that's some really important key things that we hold close to our hearts within our workplace. There's so much to un- unpack there, Renata. I, I think the biggest part of business ownership and stepping into ownership is the opportunity to delegate. And I can remember there was a bit of a catch line we used when we did last year's, um, we did a bit of a tour. I think it was the world tour. That's what it was called, the world tour um, on the east coast of Australia. Uh, and we were teaching people how to delegate and there's so much support out there for you to delegate, including software and apps and other people that you can utilize. And then of course, business support to help you get where you need to be. And I think, uh, with the understanding that delegation, yes, it's going to cost you some money often to delegate or cost you some money to find a software solution or an app, et cetera. However, as you rightly pointed out, it does free you up to create time and space for those higher value tasks so that you're able to recoup that really quickly. Bookkeepers are a classic one because so many of us step into that role to begin with where we'll do the data entry and we might reconcile. And yet when you think about the amount of time it takes you to do so, and then the amount of time that your accountant is spending it on the end of at the end of the financial year to tidy up what you have done, you have to question whether you're actually saving any money or you're spending extra money. There's a bigger outlay with your accountant anyway. So I do encourage people to think about if you are not a registered bookkeeper, do not do your bookkeeping. Let somebody else take care of it. By all means, do the data entry if that's something that you enjoy. And plenty of our ladies actually really love it. I don't know how, and I'm pleased they do, Um, but they do love it. So do the data entry if you want to, but let the bookkeeper reconcile. Let them do the best. Let them get that stuff organized for you. And as you rightly point out, do your cash flow forecasts or do your budget versus actual so you understand what your financial position is looking like because you don't need to understand how to do it, what you need to understand is what those numbers mean. And I think if you have that support and you gain that understanding, then you're able to make the business decisions you need to make with the knowledge rather than making it on gut feel, which is what so many of us do. And then the other thing you were talking about, you know, that that transference of skills, leadership is really important and it's not something that we're born with. It's something that we learn. And I encourage you all, particularly as women in trade businesses, to step up to the role and the opportunity that you have to be a leader in your business. You're already a leader in your partnership. 
uh, regardless of what your partnership looks like. And you have a real opportunity to be a leader within your business and take responsibility for things like leading your team. So we advocate weekly one-on-ones, we advocate quarterly or annual reviews, um, toolbox meetings, et cetera. They're all stuff that we can do even if we don't have the trade knowledge. I think we get very perplexed by, oh, but I don't know how to build a house. How can I possibly lead my team? The leading your team's got nothing to do with the the skills, the actual skills of building a house or creating an amazing landscape. What it does have to do with is creating that culture and fostering that team respect, et cetera, that you do so well, Renata. So much so, you and Luke won our very first ever mental health award. So we have annual Tradies Excellence Awards. It's always a mouthful. I think we should have chosen another name. Um, and so the first one was two years ago. There will be another one later this year. Renata, you and Luke stepped up to the plate. It's not an easy thing to do to an apply for an award to begin with. So I'd love to speak through that process. But I was really proud of of what you were doing then and to see the changes you're continuing to make for your team around supporting everybody's mental health. Do you want to talk us through firstly the application process for the awards and then what sort of things you're doing for your team? Absolutely. Um, it's incredibly important, um, mental health and the awareness around it. Um, the application process, oh, I first was doing pen to paper and I went, no, nah, stop this. Nick said it could be a video. So I recorded a video response to each of those questions. And I think doing so, it actually made me quite emotional. And I actually, um, a few months ago, just rewatched those clips that I sent through. And I'm just so proud of the environment that we have created. Um, it is vulnerable to put yourself out there to apply for awards. And actually at last year's awards, we nominated our second year apprentice, uh, Paddy Goodwin, and he won that mm-hmm. the kick-ass apprentice. And that, again, it plays into the whole um, mental health awareness within your team. And one thing that we can just sense straight away, we know if something is off with one of our guys mm-hmm. and we jump onto it straight away. And that might be as simple as when they're packing the new summer, I pull one of them aside and say, oh, hey, how are you going? What's, what's, what's to you? And that conversation might just be, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Had a dodgy curry after last night. Or it might transfer into a 15, 20, 30-minute conversation. So when you are going to reach out to your team, be aware that whatever answer you might get may actually be a serious one. Mm. Um As a business owner, it's incredibly important to educate yourself on appropriate responses. Um, And there's lots of support out there. There's Are You OK? The website there. I think there's a, um, oh gosh, it's just gone from my head. Um, It's a construction construction website. The Black Dog Institute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, And it's important to be aware because I'll give you an example. If one of our guys comes to work you know, heads down, shoe shuffling, Luke will say, okay, this is what we're doing. This is the task. Let's get started. And that employee still got his head down, kicking kicking the sand around as he's going from point, you know, A to B. Um, he's doing a task. He messes up the task. You know, as an employer, you could automatically go, what are you doing? You know how to do this task. Why are you stuffing up? Come on, you're off this task or whatever, you know, the repercussions might be. It's about being able to look deeper and say, hold on, his behavior is not like his usual demeanor. It's not the usual standard of how he works. I wonder what's going on. Mm. Now, it might just be then being able to reach out and say, um, hey, how's how's things at home? How's Brooke your girlfriend? How's Sally your girlfriend? You know what I mean? It could be anything. Um, And that might just start that conversation to then have an understanding. So we have a really open policy with our team that if anything is going on externally and you think it could distract you at work, feel free to let us know. Number one, so we can see if we can help in any way. Number two, so we can have an understanding that you're just not being slack at work. Now, because we have that amazing culture, none of our staff ever try to use or abuse that, if that makes sense. Um, You know, we have such a high standard in work ethic that all of the guys that we have employed are also at that high level. So I think sometimes business owners can be worried about if they 
hair too much or cotton wool or bubble wrap them too much, they're going to be soft. Mm -hmm. And what's wrong with being soft? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with being caring and compassionate and empathetic? What it does is create such a strong bond and your team actually want to work harder because they feel that they're in a place where they're cared about. And that's really hard for, you know, a lot of people are touched by mental health, Mm. whether it's themselves or whether it's family members. And men in construction, I believe the statistic is still correct, have the highest rate of suicide within Australia. Um, and we are always wanting to be at the forefront of that to ensure our team know they're supported. It's incredibly important. It really is. It can't be understated. And I, it's a real cultural change, not just for your individual business, but all business, the whole of the industry. There's a lot of people doing a lot of work, but it has to start within our workplaces. And I think quite often that's a really important role. We have an opportunity as a tradie wife to step into is, is leading that change within your own company culture. Not because the tradies can't do it, of course. However, they tend to be, particularly when they're still on the tools, it's really challenging for them to fit another thing into the day or, you know, to take the time to get educated so they're aware and they understand those responses, as you were pointing out earlier. A lot of that just feels like another huge thing at the end of the day that only adds to their own mental Mm -hmm. health and what they're trying to juggle Mm -hmm. and do. And I think it's a great opportunity for many of us to step up and start to make an impact within our businesses which of course then begins to extend to the local community. It's not just our team members that that impacts. It's we're actually skilling them up so that they can be helpful for their entire communities as well. It has a far-reaching impact when we take the time to educate ourselves about these key areas. Renata, uh, around the applying for the awards, you mentioned, you know, that it was quite a vulnerable process. And yet perhaps we talk about your apprentice and... The process before he won, so taking away the fact that he was the winner, uh, can you tell me what it was like to nominate him and what the flow on was both for him and the rest of the team? I was so proud. We both were to nominate him. And when we look at his story in particular, um, he had never picked up a shovel, you know, and that's why it's so important. I think when you do get a resume and you do do your interviews, really look past just the experience side of things. He came to us as a mature apprentice um, and so in his mid uh, early 20s and we could see something in him and we could also see something in his personality. Now, Paddy is one of those fantastic leaders and something that I was going to um, chuck in before, even for our tradie wives that maybe don't think they have strong leadership skills, um, The New South Wales government constantly hold free leadership workshops that you can go to and we've actually sent our staff on them and even ones that don't hold leadership uh, positions because it never hurts to upskill or foster that and that is something we're definitely going to be fostering with Paddy. Um, During the nomination process, we had to make sure his personality came through because he is our lovable, cheeky larrikin, 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 And he contributes so much to our team culture. So we really wanted that to come through in the application, but we also wanted to get the feedback from his peers. So we reached out to our other employees and asked them to tell us what they, why they think he should be, you know, a winner of a kick-ass apprenticeship award. And their submissions, I remember the judges saying, Um, because Nick and Was, you guys don't judge the awards. They're externally judged. Mm -hmm. And they recounted that those submissions from his um, peers were what helped get him over the line to win. And that speaks volumes because nobody wants to come to work in a place where they don't feel appreciated or they don't feel happy. And so we are stoked to have created that type of environment. Um, It really pushed Paddy's confidence levels up. Yeah. higher and he has definite goals in mind and we want to help him reach those and you know the other thing in business that people sometimes don't want to talk about is there's always going to be an evolution you're going to have staff leave you're going to have staff want to stay you're going to maybe be blindsided one day if a staff member decides to leave so it's incredibly important to always be aware of potential within your team even at those early stages 
Paddy's got into his third year. Um, so we can definitely see leadership skills and we want to invest in him. We've also paid for courses for our staff members to go and to. Um, we want to invest in him because he's a massive part of Devo Designs mm. and we were just so chuffed and proud and so were his parents that he won um, that award. Yeah, it's really exciting and I think there's a bit, we talk about this quite a bit every time we announce the awards. The flow on here, whether you win or not, um, is incredible because of what it makes the person who you're nominating feel. So we have awards for Bang Up Boss um, so it's generally the tradie. We have the real boss, which is the tradie wife. Uh, we have apprentices and there are a bunch of other awards. And I think the most important point here isn't necessarily around being a winner. It's more about the experience of understanding that somebody valued enough your performance or your personality or who you are to nominate you for award, which is fantastic when it comes to that team building that you work so hard on. Um, and it's also brilliant for supporting I guess the the unseen or the unspoken about stuff that we all do within our businesses. So we strongly advocate if you're listening, tradie wives, give your your tradie partner and a a, um, a nomination as well when the awards do come around because it's incredible to see. You might remember last year, Renata, uh, our Bang Up Boss Award winner Shane, and just how humbled he was. And that wasn't even I don't think that was even done by his partner Lara, who's previously been on the podcast. It was actually done by his team. Uh, which whether he won or not must have been the most amazing experience for him because we don't, you know, as, as team members, I I can't remember a time ever when I was employed that I walked up to a boss and said, hey, you're a fantastic boss. Never occurred to me to do something like that. And unfortunately, many employers don't do it for their team either. We tend to focus on what's wrong, not what's right. This is a great mm -hmm. way to point out what's right for everyone on your team. It's, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity I really advocate for. Renata, I want to talk with you about something a little bit different than we do with so many of our other tradie wife stories. You've got two really young boys uh, and your life is really busy and yet you still prioritise time for both you and Luke um, to work on your physical health as well as your mental health. And that, you know, that's not easy to do. And I know you've become the delegation queen. You're very good at letting go of what doesn't serve you so that others can help you in that way. But that's a journey in itself. So I'd, can you explain for us, I guess, the the tint hacks of putting yourself first in that way so that you can have what you need for you then to create the outcome that you are in your business? Man, it is hard. <laughs> and this is a topic that I could talk about for hours. Number one, times have changed. So mum and dad are both working. Mm -hmm. We're working, say, nine to five. Let's just say nine to five. School is not nine to five, but both parents are working. So somehow, whether whatever job you're doing, you have to get the kids to school, get them picked up and still work within your nine to five. How does that work? Yeah. Okay, so then we look at things like after school care or grandparents or relying on your village, your friends, your family, things like that. It is so hard. Now, I will absolutely not move this camera to pan around my house because <laughs> if you, if we were broken into, you couldn't tell. There are toys, there are, you know, the, the dishes are done, right? It's clean. But we have a five and a three-year-old, uh, two little hurricanes. And when we talk about delegating, I will quite often take a huge basket or even a garbage bag of washing down to the laundry service which I'm very lucky is on the same street and we'll dump it. I'm like, please dig, God help me. And, you know, that's wash, uh, dry, fold, 34 bucks sometimes. And again, that's the cost of living. It's hard. Yeah, You can't do that all the time. We have a cleaner. She comes once a week. Um, she used to come um, at one stage for a 12 month period. She was coming three times a week because we just couldn't do it. We can't do it all. There's this, whoever is thinking other mums or other parents can do it all. We can't. None of us can. Anything you see on Instagram, anything you see with influencers, that's a tiny snapshot. I hope the back looks very lovely and presented here. Um, you know, I hope my makeup is looking flawless. This is not what I do every single morning when I have to get up. 
um, when you throw in the business and working for yourself, the boundaries that you spoke about are so important. Come three o'clock, the phone is switched over to a voicemail service and I don't look at it, the work phone. And I don't, I do look at emails, but I don't action any of them. I need to stop looking at them. (laughs) But I go back to my mentality of when I was employed by another company, I could, clients couldn't call me after I logged off. So there are those boundaries that we've had to make sure we implement as a family. Um, and then that's also about educating your clients or future clients. And then they're like, oh, okay. No, it's it's understandable. I can't reach someone at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. That's, that's fine. Um, boundaries as a husband and wife working combo. And this is something that is always evolving and you can get so caught up in it. You know, husband walks in the door, you're like, oh, by the way, um, this happened, that happened, um, this client called that. And he's like, I just got in the door. Or even like when you're cooking dinner together, it might just happen, you know, just organically, you'll start talking about work, but it's so important to switch off. Mm. And then we talk about tools that you can do that with. One of the best tools that we got from you is the... Um, tip to download the Voxer app. Yeah. It's a walkie talkie kind of app. So through the day, instead of me calling Luke all the time to ask him questions, I'd Voxer him a question. And when he gets the notification, he boxes me the answer back. That really cut down our communication um, stress of having to talk when he walks in the door and we're all feeding the kids and trying to bath them and, you know, um, someone's hanging upside down off a lounge. Um, It's, It's those boundaries that we have to follow to make it work because it's so hard. The transferring from husband and wife to colleagues and business owners can be quite difficult sometimes and you have to lead with love and respect. Um, That was a little um, for anyone that came to our The Traders in Business retreat in Byron two years ago. That was a great session that you had um, someone coming to speak to us. And it's it's hard, but it takes time and work. And we don't always get it right. There are plenty of times I go to bed. I'm like, you know what? I just should have made the lunches tonight instead of waiting for tomorrow morning. But I'm tired. Mm. And then there are times when I kill it. And then there are times where three weeks in a row I have forgotten sports day. Mm-hmm. And uh, lucky we live close enough quickly ducked home to get his clothes. But it's hard, but you just try and look and see what you can outsource yeah. within your means or look and see what's really important. Is it important to put all those toys away before I go to bed or is it important for me to go and have a cup of tea and read my book mm-hmm. the 30 minutes before I go to sleep? The mess will still be there in the morning. It certainly and it'll be there the next night. <laughs> And maybe a week later, if that's how long it takes, and that's okay. And I, I just really want to remind all of you that are listening how important it is to ensure that you're taking time out. We yeah. uh, partic- actually both the, both of us do this. I can't say this is women specific. We both do it. Yeah. It's just important for you fellas to take some time out and to spend time together, but also spend time apart, you know, filling your own cup, doing the things that you each individually love. Some of us are really lucky and we love all the same things and you end up spending all of your time together and that's okay. And some of us prefer different activities. We've got uh, a builder that we work with and he's finally been able to create the space for him to go and play golf on Wednesday afternoons every week because it's something that really works for him, not so much for his wife. Um, But that means it frees her up to be able to go and pursue some of the things that she really enjoys outside of their relationship. And then they go to work together and they family together and, you know, they have a marriage together. So just making sure that you're honouring yourself within your partnership, both at work and your marriage, um, and putting yourself first so that you have the energy and the strength, I suppose, to do what is necessary to create the business outcomes that you're looking for. Because if you keep depleting yourselves, there's no opportunity for you to dig in when you really need to, do some of the hard yards and the hard work. Instead, you're just depleted and it makes it really challenging for you to see, okay, there might be another way to do it, to reduce your stress, et cetera. And that, you know, that's going to look like calling on your support, looking to some software solution, app solutions. Renata, the one you mentioned, Voxer, can make a huge impact as it has for you guys so that you're not doing that big debrief at the end of the day. You can communicate during your working day, which we would if we were in an office together, just because we're tradies doesn't mean that we can't do the same 
or have the same outcome at least. So it's looking for those supported areas so that you're not doing it all and you're able to take some of that time out for yourself. Mm. And quite often, Nick, sorry, one thing I was going to mention earlier was um, even for our tradie wives, quite often that might mean our office is actually on site going to the builder, going to the landscaper, going to the plumber. So I just want to say to tradie wives, go and get your white card. It's a one day course. Mm. Buy yourself some steel caps. I have um, my beautiful leopard print steel caps that get so many reviews from all of the suppliers. And it's about owning that this is your role. You can be on site. Um, you can wear the gear that makes you feel comfortable and safe mm-hmm. and take your office externally because sometimes that's what we have to do to work with our partner to find out the answers to do those things. So don't be scared about owning that title and then owning what it means to actually be, um, you know, a tradie wife or, or a business owner or mm-hmm. a tradie business. It's fun being on site. So much fun. I really enjoy it. And I think most of our tradie wives do. It's And it's a great opportunity for you to learn what happens within the trade. It doesn't mean, I still don't know how to build a house. I know lots of the lingo now after falling on my feet and needing to figure it out. But I've got a pretty vague idea and I can hold a conversation and it helped me grow my confidence within the industry. I still don't know how to build a house. I don't need to know. I just know how to run a business. Um, exactly. Some of that knowledge about your trade is really helpful uh, for building your confidence so that you can do, you know, some of the other tasks that you might have, like answering the phone or ordering materials or scheduling in the work. A lot of that comes from some of that on the on the uh, site time, which is always a whole bunch of fun. Yeah, it's also about if you can see your staff working, you can maybe understand, oh, that's why um, X, Y, Z doesn't happen. Or, okay, I can see that they might need something else on site to make their life easier. That will build connection with your team. Yeah. Don't hide yourself away at home. If you can go out there, it boosts morale. And, you know, it, it's it's little things as well. I'm not saying take the team um, coffee once a week, but even on a really hot day, I've taken the team slushies. And that little tiny act, or zuper dupers, that little tiny act is like, this is awesome. It's yeah. all about building those relationships yep. and fostering them. Love it. Thank you, Renata. It's always a joy to spend time with you. I appreciate all of what you've shared today. There's some really interesting stuff in there for our listeners to grab a hold of. Uh, Renata, if people would like to find out a little bit more about you, where they can, where can they find you? We are, can be found on Instagram. It's Devo Designs, D-E-V-O. We, uh, it's a play on our last name, which is DiVincenzo, which was very hard for people to pronounce while Luke was growing up. His nickname was always Devo. And we always say it's uh, Devo as in whip it good like the song not Devo as in do you'll be devastated if you don't choose us as your landscape uh, construction team so yeah that's us um, we're also on Facebook uh, as well so Devo Designs I'll make sure all those links are in the show notes I feel like I need to get you guys some little hats now that you can wear to next conference because you know the Devo guys the whip oh. it good guys always had those funny little hats didn't they yeah 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 and it was actually it was actually that kind of line came from a client he's like no I knew straight away I knew it was Devo and um you know and that's fine it's just a little bit of a, a funny kind of joke that yeah. sometimes we throw in there but um yeah we are so proud of where our business is and the growth that we've got um, from what more fun years and conference coming up and the men's retreat for Luke. So yeah, really looking fun. forward to it. Thanks, Renata. Appreciate you. Thank you, Nick.